All right, making offers is where we're at here. So this is basically, let's see, module, probably module four at this point. And we've already discussed uh, a little bit about what wholesaling is and how it works. We've discussed that this is a marketing business and we must locate motivated sellers and get them on the phone. We're either going to have them call us from our paid marketing or we're going to call them from the time that we're going to invest in our business and into ourselves to get them on the phone, okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to First and foremost, want to make friends with anybody that we talk to on the phone that we call or they call us. It's very, very important. Reason being is people want to work and do business with those that they know, like, and trust. This is called building rapport. So we really, really, really want to focus a lot of our time and energy and efforts on building rapport with sellers that we would presume to have motivation. Okay? So how do we do so? Well, we're going to listen. We're going to ask questions that are going to allow them to do a lot of the talking. And in the event that they sound like they're motivated, we are going to set an appointment to go meet them at the property. Reason being is, is if you can get in front of somebody and shake their hand and smile and be friendly and be happy, they're going to like you. They're going to know you. And the more time you spend with them, the more you're going to have the ability to get them to trust you and want to work with you. So I always suggest if you are new, set as many appointments as possible because you're going to learn a lot out on these appointments. You're going to learn how to negotiate. You're going to start learning, you know, different types of properties. You're going to start learning to determine your repairs. Okay. These are things that are going to be very, very important for you to determine how to make the right offer. Okay. Um, Set appointments is going to be the number one goal. Now, some sellers are going to say, hey, I need to know what you're willing to pay before I'm willing to meet you. And that's fine, too. You're going to need to make them an offer, okay? But ideally, your goal should be to get out and meet them at the property and make a friend. And it's going to just build so much experience. It's going to build confidence, okay? And it's also going to help with the rapport building, the know, the like, and the trust. Okay, so making offers. And I want to simplify this for you all because I know that there's going to be mostly people that have not done a deal watching this. So check this out. I've been in this business for almost 20 years, almost 1,000 transactions, over 700 wholesale deals. And I can tell you this. On average, okay, on average, I'm finding properties that are distressed or the homeowner, the, the seller, is distressed. And oftentimes, it's both right? They're dealing with something in their life like death, divorce, disease, so on and so forth. And additionally, the house needs repairs, lots of repairs, okay? So I can come in and I can say, hey, I can help you solve this problem and, you know, help you cash out this home. That's the conveniences, right? In exchange for a discount on the property. And here's the thing, on average, all right, I am typically buying properties between 50 and 65% of what Zillow says the property is worth. That may seem crazy to some people, but I have literally bought 700 plus properties between 50 and 65% of what Zillow says they're worth. So when we are making offers, we're actually going to use an equation. And this equation is referred to as our MAO or max allowable offer calculation or, or formula, all right? And this is going to essentially help us determine what a good offer, or in my case, a great offer would be to go about purchasing a property. So the formula goes like this, and we'll actually put it up on the screen whoop, right here so you all can see this formula, okay? So it's going to be MAO equals ARV times our discount rate, DR, okay? Uh, minus repairs, minus a wholesale fee if we're wholesaling. And that's what this course is all about. So let's go ahead and add in the wholesale fee. So ARV times discount rate, minus repairs, minus wholesale fee. That's the equation. Now we're going to solve for that to get the MAO. So the MAO is the max allowable offer that we're going to be able to offer to a seller in order to get a great deal on it and be able to wholesale it. So we're solving for MAO. So we start with the ARV, and the ARV is the after repair value. And what that means is that we're actually gonna use a number, you know, th I think this confuses a lot of people, so I'm gonna do my best to keep this very simple, but we're actually gonna use the number that we start with as what this property would sell for, assuming we already fixed it up. Now, we haven't fixed it up yet, of course, but we're gonna determine, all right, if we were to fix this thing up, what would this sell for? And we determine that 
by running comps. We, we look at sold properties in the, in, in the nearby area, in the vicinity, that have sold very, very recently. And we're looking at these sold comps, okay? And we're going to hopefully find two or three sold comps to say, hey, you know, these are very comparable to ours. These have been updated. You know, these all sold for about 200000 We think our property, when it's fixed up, would be able to sell for two hundred dollars as well. That's the number we're going to start with, the ARV, okay? And we're going to get that by running comps. Next, we're going to multiply that by our discount rate. And the typical standard discount rate is going to be 0.7 or 70%, which means that we're going to take 30% off of the top. So we're going to start with the after repair value. We're going to multiply that by, let's say, 0.7 and take 30% off the top. And then we're going to go back and we're going to subtract out the repairs that it's going to cost us to get to that after repair value. Remember, we're talking about what it's going to be worth once we fix it up. We haven't fixed it up yet. Now we need to determine what it's going to cost to get it there. Okay, so 200,000 is maybe some comps that we saw of some properties that sold in the area recently. That's what we're going to use in this example. ARV is going to be 200,000. We're going to then take that and multiply that by 0.7 and basically take 30% off the top. That's $60,000 in this case. Why would we do that? Well, the first 10% of that 30% is going to be the cost that we're going to have to incur to sell it. Sales commissions, seller concessions, utilities, closing costs, taxes, you know, so on and so forth. It's going to cost us roughly 10% to sell a property. And the other 20% is going to be the profit margin that our investors are going to want to buy at. They're not going to want to buy it. They can't get a good deal. So we need to leave a 20% profit margin for these investors. All right. Now, the reason it's discount rate that we're multiplying by instead of just 0.7 is because the discount rate actually is a sliding scale. In the best parts of town, I may be willing to pay 0.8 or a 20% discount. And in the worst part of town, I might be willing to pay 0.5 or a 50% discount. If you don't know, just the default is always going to typically be 0.7 on this equation. So ARV is 200 multiply that by 0.7 that takes 60,000 off. So now I'm at 160, I'm sorry, 140,000, right? 30 and 30 60, yep, 140,000, okay? Now I need to subtract out the repairs to be able to get this subject property to be worth 200,000. Well, maybe that is going to cost $40,000 to be able to get it, you know, new roof and new kitchen and new HVAC and all the things that these comps had that were able to get 200,000. We're going to need to do similar all right, so now I'm going to have 140,000 because I've taken 60 out from my discount rate, and I'm going to take 40 more thousand out to get to my repairs. That leaves me at $100,000. And if I want to wholesale this property, I need to take off an additional five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars in terms of a fee to get to my max allowable offer. So let's say that I take off ten thousand dollars with the wholesale fee. That essentially gets me to an offer of 90,000. My MAO, I've calculated at this point, my MAO equals 90,000. And here's the kicker. That's the most I'm going to be willing to pay. So I'm not actually going to offer 90,000 because if I offer 90,000, that's my best offer out the gate. And I don't really want to make my best offer out the gate. Instead, I want to come down a little bit. Maybe I'll offer 80 or 85,000 and the seller says, well, can you do 100? And I say, eh, I can't, but maybe we can meet in the middle. And then boom, guess what? I can meet them in the middle at the 90, right? So the max allowable offer, you know, it doesn't mean that you should offer that. In fact, that's the most you can pay. So if you lead with that, it's going to be kind of foolish because you're not going to have any wiggle room. So you want to build in some wiggle room into this formula. So let's recap. My ARV was from my comps. We determined that was about 200,000 in this example. I'm going to multiply this by 0.7 or essentially take 30% off the top. 30% of 200,000 is 60, so that takes me down to 140. I'm going to take $40,000 off for the repairs because that's what it's going to take to get to that 200,000. That puts me down to 100,000, okay? And then last but not least, I'm going to take $10,000 off for my wholesale fee, okay? So my MAO I've calculated is going to equal 90,000. The offer that I'm going to make in this scenario is going to probably be somewhere around 80 or 85,000, giving me five to ten thousand dollars of wiggle room to come up. Now, here's the cool part about this. Typically speaking, whenever we average 
over all of the deals that I've done and all the other investors that I know, and I know hundreds of them, have done, after they go through this entire formula right here, right, they're essentially buying the property on average for between 50 and 65% of what Zillow says it's worth because they're discounting and they're subtracting out the cost of these repairs. So check this out. Pro tip for anybody that is brand, brand new. If you don't know what to offer, I can tell you this. A great place to start is going to be between 50 and 65% of what Zillow says it's worth without even knowing the condition of the property. If you need to come up a little bit or come down a little bit after you know the condition of the property, that's okay. But it's always great to start low and anchor low and let individuals know that you're not interested in buying properties at retail. And you're not really interested, you know, unless you can get a good deal. And if you can get a good deal, then at that point in time, you're willing to open up the floodgates of convenience and you're going to be willing to buy the property as is and you're going to close it fast. And by the way, fast is a relative term. Two, three, four weeks is fast compared to two, three, four months, okay? And then you're going to be a cash buyer, meaning you're not going to need to go out and have a bunch of contingencies for your financing. Let's keep this very, very, very simple, okay? So if you don't know what to offer, in the, Z in the Zillow's estimate says 150000 and the property you know needs some work, tell the seller that you know, you're know you buying properties or you're interested in buying properties in the neighborhood for around the 75,000 mark and then see how they respond. If they respond and say, yeah, that's a great number, set an appointment. If they say, yeah, that's not gonna work, you know, Zillow says it's worth 150, well then you should probably encourage them to go hire a real estate agent because you're not interested in paying retail for properties. You're an investor, so have an investor mindset. Okay, but if they respond to that seventy-five thousand dollar offer and they say, "Hey, I owe eighty-five or ninety thousand on this particular property," you might be in the ballpark. So set the appointment and go out and see what the level of repairs are. Okay, this business is going to require you to, you know, be comfortable running appointments and talking to sellers and going out and looking at properties and determining repair estimates. These are the only ways that you're going to be able to get good at making offers and build confidence to do so, but also know what offers to make. So personally, me, whenever somebody calls me, texts me, emails me, direct message me on social media or whatever it may be and says, Dave, I got this deal. I typically go to Zillow, I get his estimate, I cut it in half and I say, I'm interested around that number because I can't, I can't buy a property and then lose money. That doesn't make any sense. I have to make money on the deals and I do so by buying them at deep discounts. So the MAO formula is a great formula, and that's the formula that we're gonna use once we determine our comps and our repairs. But without knowing the comps and repairs, we can't solve the formula. We have to know those two things, okay? So before you go break down your comps and or your repairs, if you don't know both of those numbers, don't even worry about trying to solve that formula. Instead, just start between 50 and 65% of what Zillow says it's worth, depending on the type of neighborhood or the type of market that you're in. If you're in a good market, well, then maybe you need to take that number to 60 or 65% of Zillow and start there. If you're in a market that's not that great, then start at half. And again, if you have to come up a little bit or come down a little bit, it's not a big deal. But you want to let these sellers know that you know, your convenience isn't free. You're charging for that by getting discounts on property. They are essentially leaving equity on the table in the deal for you. But in exchange, you're going to help them and you're going to make this process go fast. So when it comes to making offers, don't overthink it. That's like rule number one. Start with half. And if they respond that you're crazy, then move on. They're not motivated enough. And if they respond that you're in the ballpark, set the appointment. And if they say, hey, that's a great number, we'll take it, then either go set the appointment so you can determine the repairs and dive deeper into the comps or just send them a contract to purchase the home, all right? The contracts that we love using that we share in this course have tons of outs and CYA clauses. They have inspection periods. They have the ability for you to shop this contract and assign it. They have the ability for you to exit the contract if you find something that doesn't add up or maybe it increases your, your repairs that you know, weren't calculated in before, or maybe you see your comps aren't as great as you originally thought and you need to exit the deal, you can do so and it won't cost you anything, all right? You have these outs, but you have to understand that you need to make offers, all right? So check this out. As a wholesaler, 
we only get paid when we have something to sell. That's how we get paid. We make our money when we buy, but we get paid when we sell. So if we're too scared to go out and put properties under contract, how do you think we're going to get paid? We're not. We have to have confidence. We have to get out there and we have to buy properties or contract. I shouldn't have said bought because we're not actually paying for them. But we're contracting properties at great deals. And then we're turning around and we're going to find investors that are going to want to buy those properties at good deals. But we have to have the courage to send a contract and to actually have a property under contract. Because if we don't, we won't have any inventory. And the inventory is what we sell. And that's how we get paid. So really, if you think about this, the more offers you make, the better chance you're going to have of getting a seller to agree to the lower offer, which then gives you a property under contract or inventory, which then gives you the ability to then go market that contract to your pool of investors to then sell it and get paid. That are That's the simple steps in this equation of wholesaling. You must have inventory. If you are too afraid to run an appointment, then you need to work on that. Focus on that. Run as many appointments as you possibly can to build that confidence. If you're not good at running comps, well, then just run a lot of comps. Start looking at properties in your area. And there's some tools that I use that I'll drop below this video to help run comps. But you can even look at Zillow and find sold properties in the area nationwide for free. So you don't even need, you know, high-tech softwares to help you with this. All right? But you're also going to need to get good at determining what the repairs are going to cost. And this can be a little challenging in the beginning, but don't overthink it. You want to know my secret? I walk into a property and I say, hey, does it need a low amount of repairs, a medium amount of repairs, or a high amount of repairs? And then I simply multiply the square foot of the property by low, medium, or high. And in my case, low is typically about $15 or $20 a foot. Medium is going to typically be somewhere between $25 and $35 a foot. And high level of repairs is going to be somewhere between $40 and $50 a foot. It's that simple. So if I walk into a house and I say, oh, man, this thing needs everything. It needs a roof, needs windows, needs an HVAC, needs a kitchen, flooring, paint, you name it. It's going to probably be around $50 bucks a foot. Well, if that house is 1,500 square foot, that's going to cost about $75,000. So it's a pro tip on not getting crazy, you know, caught up in every little detail on trying to determine the repairs. Just ballpark it. And the more you do this, the better you're going to get. And you're going to build more confidence. And at some point, you're going to have buyers wanting to come out with you and meet you at these properties when you're marketing these contracts. And then you can start learning from them. If they say, oh, this doesn't need 75, this needs 60, well, then ask them why and learn from them. Okay, this is not something that you're going to be able to just learn on courses. You're going to have to get out in the field and put your all into this, and you will learn it over time, and you're going to get better and better. But in the beginning, don't worry about trying to run your MAO formula um, if you don't know all your numbers. Just start between 50 and 65% of the Zestimate. How easy is that? And if you're trying to determine repairs, just multiply the square footage of the property by roughly 15 or 20 on the low end, uh, 25 to 35 on the medium and 40 to 50 on the high side. And that's that simple. Don't overthink it. Okay. So making offers a couple different ways, but I've given you guys a bunch of pro tips and easy ways to prevent you from having analysis paralysis. So you actually get out and make offers to people. Because if you don't make offers, you're never going to have inventory. If you don't have inventory, you can't wholesale. You can't find a buyer to buy something that you don't have or control. It's that simple. So down below this, I'm going to put some resources. Um, I'm also going to share um, a tool that will help you guys, um, you know, with the contracts. And just keep in mind that this business is all about making offers on the opportunities that you've created from your marketing. Our last module was all about the marketing, right? Well, the marketing is just an opportunity to get on the phone with somebody. Either you're calling them or they're calling you. One or the other. Well, once you get them on the phone, you need to make a friend, try to set appointments, and start making offers to these individuals. I personally like to make offers before I go to see if they're in the ballpark. And then if they're in the ballpark, I'm going to go meet them. But if they say, hey, the Zillow says it's worth 120 you know, it needs a little bit of work, but I'm not selling it for less than 120 Guys, they're not motivated. Move on, right? But I'm typically going to 
when I'm at the property, I'm going to then use the MAO formula. Reason being is I may be able to run comps before I go, and you ideally should. But then when I get there, I'm going to then determine what part of town so I can determine what my discount rate is going to look like. And then last but not least, I'm going to be able to determine my repairs. Is this light, medium, or heavy repairs? Multiply that number by the square footage. Here's my MAO. Discount that MAO by, you know, 5, 10, 15,000. That's the offer that you make. So don't overthink it. This is not rocket science, but you must get comfortable marketing so you have opportunities to make offers and run appointments. And then those opportunities, you must make offers and follow up on those offers so that way you are able to get properties under contract, which again, gives you inventory so you can then take it to the marketplace for your investors, your cash buyers, your landlords, your fix and flippers, and wholesale those contracts to them so you can get paid. Don't overthink it, but understand that you must make offers if you want to have inventory in this business. And there are simple, simple ways that we've discussed in this video to do so. All right, the next module is going to be all about using contracts and the actual paperwork that we're going to use to then go get a property under contract. But before we go to that module, you have to understand that you need to get comfortable doing some sort of marketing. Whatever that marketing is, be consistent with it. That marketing is going to create opportunities. We, then, we, we need to then set appointments and make, make offers so we can get those properties under contract. And then once we have it under contract, we can then turn around and we can wholesale it or market it to our list of investors. So the next module is going to be all about making offers. I'm sorry, using contracts. And we're going to share with you a contract that we have used to purchase probably close to five or 600 properties. And you can use it too. So check out the next module all about using contracts.